Any good people, Riot Starter TV is back again. I know it's your favorite show, your favorite podcast on the planet. You know what I mean? Shout out to Black Power Media, our network. We are steadily growing and we're steadily bringing you more and more political education, more information, so on and so forth. Um, if you missed the last couple episodes of Riot Starter TV, definitely go dig in the archive. Look for uh, the last interview I think I did was with uh, Juliana Lumumba which is uh, Patrice Lumumba's daughter. Uh, very powerful piece if you missed that. Um, before that, we had the Ruba Ben Wahad and uh, the 55th year anniversary of the Black Panther Party and so much more. Um, my efforts and intent is to definitely uh, bring folks to the forefront, folks who deserve to be heard and to de who deserve to be seen and who need to be heard and seen, seen and heard. Uh, so with that in mind, what I wanted to do is I wanted to call on uh, one of my favorite people on the planet, one of the folks who's been banging out uh, since, I mean, before I knew her, you know, and um, a person who I've actually been in the streets with. She was an elected official and one of the only elected officials that I know on the planet who was in Congress, who had the audacity to be in places like the Bluffs here in Atlanta, Vine City, in the hood, protesting uh police terrorism um shutting down folks on a on a national level and a local level folks have seen her give donald rumsfeld the business and we'd like to say of course rest in pp to donald rumsfeld and his uh his partner colin powell down there doing what they're doing uh but you know she gave him the business and also on a local level um you know just putting folks in check and for good reason so without further ado i want to introduce to you uh six-time u.s congresswoman cynthia mckinney what's happening how you doing hi kalanji it's always great to be with you um and even then it's been like you know way too long and we need to do something actually in the back of my mind i'm thinking you and i should do something together um I just got to figure it out, you know, but uh, you've already established a platform. And um, so I want to do something with you. <laughs> hey, well, let's go. Always. Now, you know, this is not the first time I've said that because <laughs> back when I was in the Congress, I yeah. contacted you. You came to the congressional office. You thought I was trying to entrap you. You thought I was an FBI informant or something because well, I sure. wanted to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so folks should know not to take it personal, right? I mean, you know, like I'm not, you know, but the crazy thing about it, you know, when, when you reached out, I was like, man, this ain't no Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney because I already knew your work. I'm like, what you calling me for? You know what I mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm out here in the hood. <laughs> you know, but, yeah, um, that's where I wanted to be, in the hood. Hey, 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 <laughs> Helping and, and, the hood. <laughs> yes, and, and you were on all levels. We've done work um, around uh, the brother Bernard Burden, who was lynched down here in Georgia yeah. back in 04. Um, then with Katherine Johnston out in the community where uh, fake jack leg preachers tried to you know, play me, and it was you and your yeah, father, yeah. Rising Power. Uh, who shut that business down, uh, the reporters, you know, and um, yeah. everybody from Shirley Franklin to uh, their top brass, giving them the business and then feeding the homeless at the shelters. Yeah. You know, um, Every yeah. Thursday night I, I did yes. that. And then, of yes. course, you uh, took me to Peace Tree and Pine, which is no longer That's right. um, available to people who find themselves homeless. And you know, it's just a shame that we can't solve these problems. And 
we go to the polls and we vote, but every time our elected representatives get captured by somebody else That's right. and they get stolen from us. And I'm just wondering, you know, I, I even love the name of your uh, channel because um, we need to start something. We, you know, we we needed to start something about forty years ago. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But it's but but like they say, you know, no wine is fine before it's time. You yes. know, it's, 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 it's never too late. We here now. We here now. Um, you are now Doctor Cynthia McKinney. You know, so yes. You know, Want to acknowledge that because uh, I work with some doctors on here, and they always talk about their PhD. You know what I mean? So yeah. You know, well, you know what? If you have to say it, then <laughs> and hey, then hey, you know, hey. uh, I don't have anything to prove other than my my work, hey, and nice. my work speaks for itself. I have tried. I mean, you know, oftentimes nowadays I have a lot of time to think, and I wonder. Okay, you know, if I were among the the sold out. That's right. If I had betrayed my 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 name, my lineage, my background, my history, if I had betrayed all of that and become a sellout, mm -hmm. what mean, value would I have right. to the community? Right. And so here's what I think. Had I become a sellout, I would be loved publicly, scorned privately that's right um i would uh in within that kind of rubric though uh i would run away from fights i would never take a stand and i would earn my own personal disdain that's right so now is it is it worth all of that um, in order to be there, I mean, you know, we've got such massive issues that are confronting the community now, and we don't have spokespersons for us. That's right. I mean, I think about now you've got a Democratic Party that wants undocumented immigrants to vote in U.S. elections. Right. They don't want them to go through the normalization period that you, which is very long and I you know would be one, among the first to say that the entire immigration process needs to be changed. Right. But it's not being changed and it's not even being addressed. It's just open the spigots, let everyone come in, organize it so that they can come in, disperse them throughout the country and then tell them you're free to vote now without the background knowledge of what even voting means in the U.S. setting, what the Constitution means, what the aspiration of constitutional um, living has meant for those who were left out of the Constitution. Right. And of course, you know, uh, women were left out. White men were left out in the very beginning. They couldn't vote. Um, uh, of course, blacks had to do everything to, to fight, to be able to vote. And um, then to have a significant vote that just because you can go and uh, press a button on an electronic voting machine doesn't mean that you're exercising your right to vote or that your right to vote is even being um, observed because you don't even know if your vote's being counted. You don't know what happens after you cast that vote. So um, there's so much and uh, there's so many affronts to our mm, human dignity that are being cast upon us literally by the day that um, I just wonder, I just wonder so many things. I just, you know, sort of allow these things to percolate in my brain 
to try and understand how we're going to get out of this circumstance that we find ourselves in. Let me ask you this, because of the fact that, of course, um, you know, I, you know, we've spoken on numerous occasions and I think you kind of uh, know my, my take on on electoral politics. Uh, <laughs> I want to ask you, like, you know, for folks who are in the chat and the viewing and a view later on, mm -hmm. uh, because I think that. You know, for some, it's like, OK, here's this black woman who stepped on the scene and she fell out of nowhere, you know, and all of a sudden they see you, you know, challenging the state, which we appreciate. Um, what got you into electoral politics? Give us some background on who Cynthia McKinney was uh, pre, you know, um, pre Congress. I mean, I know that you the first black woman uh, here in the state of Georgia to be elected to Congress. But who were you before that and what? What uh, brought you into that particular? Well, world? you know, if we want to talk about uh, black activism, a, a lot of my friends, uh, my contemporaries, we now say that we're the last generation of, of black people. And the reason we say that, uh, actually, let me just, uh, this book right here. What's Wrong with Obama Mania? It's written by Ricky Jones, who is a professor. Where is he? Uh, either at Louisville or Kentucky. And for those people who are in that area, I know there's a big difference between Kentucky and Louisville. Um, but he's at one of those universities. And he dedicates a whole chapter to um, my story. And basically one of the things that he identifies that's wrong with Obama mania is that black people like me in the political system or in the political process basically became history. So the, title of his chapter, I'm trying to find it right here. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this. Black Hawks Down. Okay. And he characterizes me as a Black Hawk. And I was very proud of that because I am a Black Hawk. And um, there's some things that I don't care who asks you, you just can't compromise on. And that's been my position. That was my position, which is why I find myself ruminating about what it might have been, what kind of career I might have had if I had sold out, because the people who sell out are the ones who get protected. The people who sell out are the ones who get praised. And the Black Hawks got shot down, as yeah. Ricky Jones discusses in this book, What's Wrong with Obama Mania? So, just as those uh, uh, white protesters were marching in Charlottesville and they were saying, we will not be replaced. Well, according to my personal experience and according to Ricky Jones, Black Hawks were replaced. Okay. We were replaced with an Obama, which is not even close to a Black Hawk. So we, we, we exchanged the real thing for a fake, a fake facsimile. <laughs> sure, sure. And it's not even a, you know, it's not even a, a real facsimile. It's a, it's, it's a, an abomination of what it's supposed to represent. Now, what's supposed to happen when this attempt is made on our community is that we're supposed to recognize that, uh, that our community is being attacked and we're supposed to respond appropriately so that we can protect those whose interests are our community. That's right. That didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen with me. It didn't happen with um, Earl Hillian in Alabama. It didn't happen Cleo Fields in Louisiana. There was a whole slew of us who worked really hard, who had history in the community, 
and were able to become members of Congress for the community. Right. And then um, because we maintained our commitment to the community, we became targeted. Hmm. And as a result of being targeted, uh, we were targeted enough of our people either stayed at home or were confused about the propaganda. And so on election day, we all came up short. Now that's a travesty because the lesson therein is if you do nothing, if you sell out, if you are not responsive to your community, I can still ride around in DeKalb County and I can say, oh, those are my sidewalks. Those are my street lights. Those are my pedestrian enhancements. Those right. are my sound barriers. That's my HOV lane that's yet to be built because I guess they're holding the money. Uh, these are all, by now, I just read that they deferred the um, MARTA line that was supposed to go into South DeKalb. Well, they deferred it. And, um, but that was my, my money that I got for MARTA to do that so that we wouldn't experience transportation apartheid. And yet, as you know, city of Atlanta and its environs are becoming so dense right. right now. And we don't have mass transit or public transit to, to uh, alleviate the traffic scenario and businesses are leaving. People are leaving because it's just, too much of a hassle to get in your car and try to go someplace at any particular. I was on the on the road. I think it must have been around. It was a Sunday when there was supposed to have been no traffic, and it was and it it was like standstill traffic. Right, right. So um, the quality this this diminishes the quality of life, and I was all about improving the quality of life. Now, so I asked as we're riding in the car and. And I'm saying, oh, I got this and I got this and I got this. And I'm with my uh, contemporaries. And I asked the question, OK, so now can you show me because I got senior citizen, I mean, senior citizen uh, 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 housing, uh, all kinds of different projects you can point to and you can see the yeah. result of my 12 years there. And so I'm wondering, OK, so now what are the people what what? I was in the car with several people who live in the district and I asked them, what can you show for the, the time since I left the Congress? And there's nothing, there's nothing. And yet the incumbent continues to get votes. Right. So people are still being supported. People are still being voted for. And yet, when it comes to material quality of life improvements, you can't find them. And this makes me wonder what the heck is going on with our community and what the heck is going on with our people. Let me ask you this. I mean, you know, because I, I, I noticed a change uh, and I'm glad you pointed out locally because of the fact that all politics are local, but on a national and international local level, when you were in office, um, you brought up issues like um, COINTELPRO. Yes. You, know what I mean? you talked about uh, the assassination of Tupac. Yes. You talked about um, uh, with, with DynCorp and what was going on with the uh, with, with the uh, the war games during 9-11. Yes. Uh, yes. Which, you know, it, so now we have this new brand of, of politicians. You have the quote unquote squad. Um, I, I want to ask you, you know, I wouldn't be me if I, don't, if I don't ask you, like, what is your take on the squad? I mean, are, are they the new uh, Cynthia McKinney's and, and, and you know, or are they <laughs> uh, byproducts of uh, Obama? You know, what? what, what well, th th this is uh, acceptable politics in the Obama reign. And so um, now we continue to live in the realm of Obama. And so therefore, uh, the politics that's practiced is Obama politics. And that, again, is another problem with Obama mania. So um, everything that has come after is not real. It's, it's um, not even a reasonable facsimile 
of what used to be. And because the younger generation, we don't have the intergenerational dialogue the way we should. So then of course you and I uh, talk, but the, the masses of young people out there don't know what it's like to have someone like me in office because basically when I left, that was the, <laughs> that was the end of it. And so now we try and get what we get are people who pretend. Right, right. And so the community is satisfied with pretenders. And then there's people like me who are providing a critique and saying, no, it's not the real thing. Right. And we, our community will never progress without the real thing. It was the real thing that we had pushing us and propelling us in the 1950s, the 1960s into the early, well, you know, 68 was about the end of it when they, um, 69, when they murdered um, uh, Fred Hampton and, you know, were able to basically just wipe out the, the, the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers were the real thing. Right. And so you can see today that the Black Panthers are not tricked or fooled or, you know, by what's being uh, perpetrated today and put on the people with the propaganda and everything. The Black Panthers are real and they know real from not real. And right. but young people who don't have the benefit of having interacted with people like Black Panther Party members, they don't, they can't discern the real from the fake. And right. so now we've got a proliferation of fake that's projecting itself to be real. Right. And um, uh, I, uh, some young people had reached out to me and uh, they were interested in me and Jesse Ventura running together and um, uh, it's my understanding, I didn't speak directly to Jesse, but last week, one of those young persons did. And Jesse basically said, there's no room in the political system for me anymore. So he's out. And, um, you know, that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's pretty bad when there's no room, when the, 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 uh, it's called squeezing out. And so the, the real ones have been squeezed out by the fake ones and we've allowed it to happen. Uh, Judge Joe Brown has a commentary about this phenomenon as well. And he, you know, talks about the, the, the real ones. Uh, I, well, I've heard him more talk about who's not real. Right. Um, and he talks, but that's sort of what he talks about because at the end of the day, you know, Judge Joe Brown was given a lot of perks to hide the fact that James Earl Ray didn't murder Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Hmm. And he refused to do it. Right. He stuck to his principles. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely that part. You know, that that's a, it's 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 unpopular to be principled. Um, I remember, you know. They, they were coming at you so hard. They was coming at you so hard that it was bananas. I'm talking about uh, you had natural hair. And <laughs> yeah, you, you, which I still have my natural hair. Right, right. You won't find me putting anything on my head. No <laughs> no mops, no nothing. <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying that- I'm I mean, black they, and I'm proud. <laughs> that, 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 that's a beautiful thing. I mean- they, I mean, they, they was mad at the at, at, at the at the capital about your hair. I think it was more of an uproar yeah. about you coming up in there with natural hair than it was with January yeah. 6. I, yeah. I want to. And speaking of January 6, I mean, you know, you coming up out of up out of Congress. I mean, what, what's your take on that? Because I, I never spoke to you about that. And I, I would love to hear, like, you know, could that have happened if if myself and, and, and Daruba and and about seven other Africans, you know, decided that we wanted to storm the Capitol. I mean, how would that work? What, what, what's your take on it? Well, we should have stormed the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and in fact, the last time there was an opportunity for Black people to storm the Capitol, 
was the Million Man March and, and the Capitol evacuated. <laughs> Everybody got the heck out of Dodge. Yeah, so they were afraid. Yeah. Right. They were afraid of the possibility, but they should have never been afraid, you know, because at the end of the day, nothing really happened. And that's the that's the whole point is that they work very hard to make sure that nothing happens. And our condition remains the same. The And the only reason that we should involve ourselves or engage ourselves in politics is to improve our material condition. And if we don't do that, if you cannot see a benefit from your participation in the political process, then uh, that's why a lot of people have decided they are not going to participate because they don't see a benefit. Right. The, the the lack of participation is um, is um, uh, understandable. The problem, though, is that now you have more participation, but it's in the wrong direction. Right. And so it's um, more participation, more uh, um, enthusiasm. Uh, can you imagine anybody being enthusiastic about Bi Joe Biden? I mean, no, you know, I mean, <laughs> this man can put two sentences together no. and he represents the United States on the global stage. Is this the best? Right. that the Democrats can do. But you right. see, this is the racism of the Democrats right. because there are some black people who have remained loyal to the party and they have done everything the party asked. As I told you last time we talked, I had one very famous Congresswoman say to me, Cynthia, you just have to accept that when the leadership tell us to do something, <laughs> we're going to do it. Okay, so now that's the mentality They've been very loyal, and yet they weren't tapped right. to run for president. Not even considered. Not even considered. Right. And in fact, right. what they you've got members of Congress who write uh, from Georgia and in other states who have been there for a long time, members of the Congressional Black Caucus, they were never prompted to run for the Senate, to run for this, to run for that. They reached in and they picked their hand picked their their hand picked clones and they say, okay, you can run. And that's not every for every state, but that's right. just a you know, so uh the Democratic Party is has betrayed the black community that has been its stalwart supporters, and uh that it, it is enough, in my opinion, for us to say, okay, enough is enough, right. but enough isn't enough. Enough is, it doesn't ever seem to be enough right. with the black community. It always seems to be able to accept a little bit more abuse. And that's where I've broken with, with my community. I can't right. take any more abuse. Right on. Well, we, we appreciate you not being uh, uh, <laughs> a, a victim of the Stockholm syndrome. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, but I do. I, I understand it. I understand right. it because, you know, I taught for five years in a country that had been colonized. And right. so you've got this colonized mentality and it's very difficult to shake it. It's it's one of the reasons why, you know, we celebrate my natural hair. Um, uh, even after 400 years, you know, because. This is something that is still, well, hopefully right. it's, it's it's more prevalent now, but you know, it's a, it's a statement right. that you make. And it was a statement when I made it a long time ago, when I first went natural, um, when the, the, um, the hairstylist, uh, I was doing like this and everything because they put that, cream on my head and it was burning and I was doing like this and then she said you gotta sit still because your hair's not straight enough wow. that was the light bulb that went off because I, I told her well I don't want straight hair <laughs> I want whatever, whatever I have here that's what I want and it was at that moment oh my my battery is going out again. I don't know what's going on. Why is keeps coming out? So um, maybe we can take a little break and I can go back and 
uh, it's all good. We'll go hand, this hand out. your business. And, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll bring you back on the screen in a second. Okay, great. Yeah. We're here with Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney, six time Congresswoman uh, and former, not even former, uh, vice presidential candidate under the Green Party. We appreciate you all checking in today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, definitely put them in the chat. This is Riot Starter TV today. Make sure you, uh, if you, if it's your first time coming to Black Power Media, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our channel. Also, um, if you're checking out Riot Starter TV, I want you to know that we have a whole lot of dope interviews coming up with a whole lot of different people. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to start doing this thing randomly. So if you want to stay tuned and know what's going on definitely follow me on twitter my twitter is at kalanji changa that's at kalanji changa make sure that you are uh, you know you follow me there and i will keep you posted i'll give you at least a couple hours notice we have a few um uh interviews coming up with uh some more dignitaries more freedom fighters and you know we want we want to bring you that political education but like i said if you have any questions definitely put them in the uh in the, in the piece and um you know, we'll be ready to rumble in a second. We're going to bring uh, the comrade, Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney, back to the table now. <laughs> okay. And I'm in my little makeshift studio, see, because uh, I'm not at home. Okay. So I'm just trying to do the best I can. And it's just, you know, it, it's really jacked up. It's not. Hey, man, listen. <laughs> we, we, we're going to make it happen anyway. Right? <laughs> so, um, I, I want to ask you too, because of the fact that when we talk about these attacks and, and, and we know that you've been, uh, as they would say, uh, about folks like you and, and everyone else that I would hang with quote unquote outspoken. Right? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> which, which seems to be like, uh, it's always an honor when I hear outspoken because of the fact that that's right. When, 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 when someone says that you're outspoken, it simply means that, as you said, the, the, the other congresswoman said to you that, uh, you know, if you just basically just shut up and do as masses say, everything going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? Well, but, everything is all right for her and her family right. because, you know, they are a, they are um, there and doing what they're told. <laughs> but it just, I, you know, I just, I could never do that. I right. was endowed with a brain. Yeah. And um, I was encouraged to use my brain. And so uh, when you tell me X and uh, I can see only Y, oh, you know, there's a song. Uh, this young man, I'm assuming he's young because <laughs> uh, that's who uh, reaches out to me a lot these days. Um, there's a song that he wrote and... Yeah, here it is. I'm, I I want to share my share my screen. Oh, wait a minute now. How do Come I do on, that? You, uh, wait a minute. How do I, Let's see. Share. Uh, share screen. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I should have um Okay, let's see. Boom. Shit. Oh, oh, great. Okay. Are you sure? Um, so actually what's happening now is I'm trying to find, it allows me to see, that's why you guys like StreamYard because um, <clears throat> it allows me to share down to the, um, the tab. But now I have so many tabs open. I'm trying to find the tab. It's all um, good. You better than me because I, I still haven't <laughs> mastered this. <laughs> Let's so, see. Yeah. I'm trying. Well, and here's the thing. I don't really know. Um, so it's got too many. Oh, so see, it's not differentiating between windows so i've got multiple windows open and multiple tabs I in each of the I mean. <laughs> windows okay if i can't find it quickly because it's just to make the point but it's just a cute it's a cute way to make the point um okay 
I'll share a window and um, oh my god it's got every window too oh this is okay i'm just going to share the screen oh good but now okay here we go now so you see my screen and then i'm going to go uh, right here. You see that? Yes. Okay. 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 I don't care who likes it. So this young man <clears throat> who goes by the name of Spartacus Jones okay. sent this song to me that he wrote. And the name of the song is, uh, I don't care who likes it. And so he, he basically, the lyrics are that this person is going, who's singing, is going to do things the way he feels they should be done. And he doesn't care who likes it or who doesn't like it. And so, but this is, this graphic is what I wanted people to see right. where you've got the enforcer saying two plus two equals five. Mm -hmm. And he's holding the gun at this person's head and saying, and the person keeps saying four. It reminds me. Now I can stop. Um, I can stop sharing, <laughs> and uh, go back to my. So, um, so we should not be sharing now, right? No, you good. It, okay, you, great. Yeah, so, um, so basically, I I want I did all of that to 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 show what we're being. And it's it's always been that way, but now it's sort of at large that everybody is has a gun to their head and they're being told to ignore the reality, right. ignore your senses and accept what we tell you hmm. is correct. Hmm. And I'm not cut out for that either. That's where we are today. So um, how was that playing out on the international stage? Because of the fact that we know there are certain quote unquote superpowers that happen to be pretty damn small, but they have their teeth and hands and everything everywhere, you know, um, yeah. uh, the Israels and the, the U.S. and so on and so forth. How do you see that playing out on a world scale? Give us give us some e examples just on an international level. Well, um, I think uh, n n now, well, of course, Israel is a problem. Israel yeah. is a huge problem. But Israel itself is n not the only problem because we have people who are loyal to Israel all over the world. Sure. And that loyalty then gets played out all over the world. No matter if they live in Australia, they live in the United States, they, no matter where they live, if their primary loyalty is to Israel, that's an issue for the people who live in those countries. Now, uh, speaking of that, I'm reading another book. Uh, you can always come to me. <laughs> this book right here is excellent because what has happened is um, that, that you mentioned the January 6th um, conundrum. Conundrum. Yeah. Well, now, you know, the interesting thing is that how long have you and I been talking about political prisoners? Uh, over 20 years, I think now. And how long did we try to entreat uh, allies to help with our political prisoners? Since, since we knew about them. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, Folk talking about political prisoners. Right, right. So one of the things that I've always said is that if it's wrong and it happens in the black community, you stop it right. from happening in the black community. And then that way um, it won't happen to your community. Right. And so people have, I believe, Oh, I should have got my other book, Being in Time by Gilad Atzman. 
Because basically what Gilad says, and it is true, is that the population of the United States has been divided and subdivided and uh, sous-divided, sous-divisé, <laughs> all of these different micro-divided so that it's hard, darn hard to experience um, unity. So right. people can talk a lot about, well, we need to come together, we need to unite. And if we look at Paolo Freire, I always go back to the originals when you're trying to decolonize the way people think, and you're also trying to start a movement or become a part of a movement, and you're trying to discern which movement is the legitimate movement, uh, you have to look at the leaders and who their allies are. And there's a whole lot that's going on here. But in the end, you know, Franz Fanon, um, Paolo Freire, Jose Maria Sassan, these are the people who wrote the book on how one decolonizes one's mind as well as one's territory, right. as well as Amilcar Cabral is one of the ones that I look at as well, or look to as well. And so uh, from Paolo Freire, he gave us the mechanisms of oppression. So what are those mechanisms of oppression? Conquest, uh, divide and rule, um, cultural invasion, so that you begin to live out your oppression and you normalize through your culture hmm. the oppression of others. Hmm. And um, so we, we, we get these uh, mechanisms of oppression and then <clears throat> he also gives us the tools for liberation, unity, cooperation, organization and cultural synthesis. Sorry, so um, so it, we know that we have an enemy within, barbarians inside the gates. Right. How are we going to uh, eliminate, expel these barbarians? <clears throat> and the only way we can do that is with these tools for liberation. And if we can't unite, so I have one <clears throat> young person who contacted me the other day and said, well, now I can't talk to that person because that person is a black nationalist. And this is a white liberal. Wow. This is not a white nationalist. The white nationalists and the black nationalists agreed to talk to each other. It's the white liberal who said, I can't talk to them. Right. And so then, then you, you build in your own defeat before the war even gets started. So I decided that I needed to have a military perspective because now what we're talking about is a military operation. <clears throat> if you don't think that the spike protein which targets certain genotypes and exempts other genotypes is not a biological weapon. You need to go back and under, understand what uh, biological weapons are. Hmm. So we are under attack. Our bloodstream is under attack. It's a military operation. DARPA uh, used this graphene oxide to... Uh, they want to connect the soldiers to the internet. So it's called, uh, well, one aspect is synthetic biology, but the other is uh, nano, bio, nano, nanotechnology, I believe. Right. And um, <clears throat> so what uh, this graphene oxide is, which is supposedly... I don't know that, but I've had doctors, several doctors now on at least two different continents have said that graphene oxide is in this, uh, the jab. And um, so DARPA did do a study 
where they were trying to connect, like I said, they were trying to connect the soldiers to the internet so that they could de deliver a message to the soldier through his teeth hmm. and not uh, actually have to use a device of some sort, an external device, but utilizing the body itself. And they've already discovered that bone is a sound transmitter. So you can, uh, you know, in the voice, voice to skull technology where you have the external device and you want to talk to someone, uh, you're able to do that. We know that what DARPA is trying to study con involves what supposedly, reportedly, is in every one of the vaccines. The um, uh, Johnson & Johnson, the Moderna, the Pfizer, and the AstraZeneca. They all have this one common element. They're different in other respects. But in that one respect, they're all the same, which I believe this is a huge DARPA. This could be a huge DARPA experiment. Um, but we also know that um, anyway, DARPA means Pentagon, means military, means war. So I go to this guy because the author, Colonel... Uh, Don de Grand Pre is his name. He thinks like a military person. And indeed, in his uh, cover blurb, he says, we are at war and we are losing. And that's the truth. We're at war and we're losing. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to pick up some military tech um, tactics from uh, this, it's actually a four part series. It's this, this is volume one. And then this is volume two, all about how September 11th was carried out from a military's perspective. This is volume three. And this is volume four. And then he died. <laughs> Interestingly, he died. So anyway, I'm reading this now so that I can gain an appreciation of what military tactics or strategy might be employable by grassroots people like us in order to uh, save ourselves first. And then if we can save anybody else, that's, that, that would be fine. But first of all, we have to save ourselves. Now, let me let me uh, rewind a little bit because of the fact mm -hmm. that you're going to have different people come on and some people are going to say, well, you know, that sounds like a bunch of conspiracy theories and hold on. How do we get to this? So on and so forth. You are a person who came up out of Congress. Right. And you've challenged. uh like you said, we talked about folks like DynCorp and, and, and so many other different um, uh, corporations and, and uh, military industries and, and, and folks who are part of that particular uh, complex and, and, and you know, the, the prison industrial complex, so on and so forth. Um, right now, in, in your coming from you, your thoughts on this whole new era after that is, that's been in effect going on two years what what is what's your thoughts on this are you are you suggesting that it's a biochemical warfare situation or what what's your thoughts on it because um you know i, I know that it's 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 a very touchy subject nowadays certain things you can't talk about certain things certain it things. shouldn't be touchy because right. <laughs> we're living it indeed and uh, if anyone knows me now, the propagandist might say, well, you know, uh, Juliet Alperin was the one who initially called me a, a, a conspiracy theorist. But we know that that terminology was created by the CIA uh, to obscure certain uh, behaviors inside the CIA. Right. So now, uh, you know, where is Juliet Alperin get this, this notion from that she would characterize me as such and then try to discredit? Anybody can go, to, you can go to the DARPA website 
I visit the DARPA website, but you can you can go to journalists who cover DARPA. Um, I am not responsible for the ignorance of other people. I just throw that away now. Right. And I'm not going to try to save other people who, if they're not interested in saving themselves, you know, I, I'm Harriet Tubman. And those people who want to be saved, uh, they will find me. And the other people and others who like me, because I'm not the only one. But um, uh, those people who are satisfied with things the way they are, then they can go down with the ship because <laughs> it is a Titanic and right. it is going down. It's go it's 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 a uh, what do they call it? A deliberate destruction. Right. Uh, but it is going down. And uh, the Klaus Schwab's have told us that um, there's going to be a cyber virus that is going to strike that will be worse than the biological virus of hmm. SARS coronavirus too. I believe these people when they say these things. And so then I go and I search and I see how likely it is or how close they are to be able to achieve their mission and their goals and uh, their tactics. And they are quite able and probably about 20 years ago, I warned people, I said, look, you know, there's a technology of control that is, um, you put it in the wrong hands and we're gonna have a problem. Now that technology, those technologies of control, because there are several of them, there are multiple technologies of control, they're in the wrong hands. And now we've got people who uh, wanted to create a black bomb, those Afrikaners down in South Africa that wanted to create that black bomb and the Israelis that wanted to create the, the, the brown bomb, the Arab bomb. Uh, we've got, um, oh, um, let me see. Uh, I shouldn't do this again. <laughs> uh, oh, good. But if, uh, you know, because I don't even have time to to teach people anymore. I just I just I don't have time. I'm 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 busy doing my own thing. Okay, oh. so <laughs> uh, let me just share one more thing, one more time. Uh, share screen. For those who are just tuning in, you're checking out Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney live and direct on Riot Starter TV, and and we all gonna get white ball when she finish. <laughs> but, but that's what we do around here so don't get it twisted okay so uh here we go <clears throat> this document this is page 60 of rebuilding uh-oh why don't you see the document uh i think you you look like you got a whole bunch of tabs open oh well I only want this one. Let me see. Okay, wait a minute. I'll let you work on it behind the scenes. Let me see. Well, see, it only comes up when I'm trying to darn. I got it pulled up. Oh, okay. Let's you know, see. You, you so, but it only comes things. up. Let me yeah. see. While you were pulling that up, I wanted to ask you. I'd read something recently uh, in regards to Dynco about uh, them working on a. Uh, a vaccine about maybe a year and a half ago under a different name. Did you know anything about that? Uh, I forgot the name of the, uh, uh, the company that they were calling themselves. I guess it was a subsidiary. I got I gotta look it up. What a Pfizer or it, um, it wasn't Pfizer. It was, um, it was another. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. So I should, I am sharing now. Okay. Uh, oh, here we go. Right here. All right. So this document here is um, Rebuilding America's Defenses. It was uh, written by uh, the Project for a New American Century. And I'd like your audience to just read this highlighted the, paragraph right the, here. The words okay. are kind of small on this end. It's, okay, so let me see. Yeah, I don't know what's going Does on. Does that make it bigger for you? Nah, it's still it's still the it's same. It's still size small. Oh, it's bigger for me. So now let me see. How do I do that? 
Let me see here. That's a pretty good question. Does that make it bigger? It did make it bigger. Now let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, you, you're gonna have to scroll over because now it's very big. Now it's like so you can move it, move it along. So hopefully we got some speed readers. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, okay. Now those are not my words. And advanced forms of biological warfare that can target specific genotypes may transform biological warfare from the realm of terror to a politically useful tool. And this is from who? This is Project for a New American Century. Let me scroll up to the... Uh, the name of this book, booklet, <clears throat> report is rebuilding America's defenses. Let me see here. Gee. Oh. How can I just go to page one? Okay. Okay. But you see here, right. it's rebuilding America's defenses, strategy, forces, and resources for a new century. This was written in, let me see if the year is here, Donald Kagan, Gary Schmidt, Thomas Donnelly. Okay. And let's see the cover. I want people to see. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Rebuilding America's defenses. Okay, and then if you go to the very end, unfortunately, let me see if that can go. If you go to the very end, uh, Dove Zakai, remember he was the comptroller of the Pentagon at 2001? Uh, uh, Paul okay. Wolfowitz. These are not people who just bump their gums. These are people who actually have the ability to make this happen. Right, right. Uh, William Crystal, Fred Kagan. I mean, these are not just nobodies. Right. These are, these are people from their camp, as you That's said. That's right. Louis Libby, remember who he is? Libby. His, that's Scooter Scooter Libby. He was the chief of staff ah, to that's Libby. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Dick Cheney, right. who was receiving all of the stove piped so-called intelligence that was actually faked intelligence from Michael Ledeen and others to take the U.S. into war against Iraq. So these are people, Elliot Cohen, I mean, these are people. So this this is this was written before before they uh, went office then, correct? Yes. This is, yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. And uh, so now let me stop sharing. And uh, so now these people wrote this. And if we're not careful enough to, to read and understand who is doing what, uh, then that's our problem. But, you know, I read. I read a lot. <laughs> you, you know, that, that right there, which you, which you just did, uh, you know, highlighting folks like uh, Scooter Libby, for folks who are familiar with old Scooter, you know, it, it's it's. Um, you know, in showing that you're looking at for, for folks who don't recognize the names, they may just think, oh, this is just a bunch of other conspiracy theorists and, and what, yeah. quote unquote. But these are folks who were actually, you know, who held office. You That's know, right. And, 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 and so when you talk about, you know, this this bio warfare and coming from them, you know, it's like coming from them. Right. It means I need to pay attention. Yeah, that's I what mean, that means. This is what they said. It's not that's what, what they said. Yeah, it's not like you coming up out your head, but see they right. it, it's like I tell folks, it sounds better than when better when white folks say it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, if, they if, believe if it. They yeah. say it, it sounds better. You know if you say it, you and I say it, we over here tripping, we talk right. about you know. I, I think because part of it, in, in my opinion, is that it's too easy to accept whatever um stats that are given to you by the state. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
in one regard, we're against against the system. And then in another regard, they say, okay, well, this is we're for the you know, according to this. That's you know, right. Boom, boom, boom. Well, you That's know what right. they said according to who said it? That's right. You know That's I mean? right. That's and right. What did they say before they said that? That's right. So now the <clears throat> the I think the perception of most people is that those who took the jab are the safest. Um, but the fact is that those who took the jab are showing up in hospitals. Hmm. And what I tried to explain to one young man who's leading an anti-jab uh, effort for the black community is what happened with the animal studies. There were no human studies. This is the human study. But what happened with the animal studies is that the animals died upon re-exposure. So say uh, now um, Joe Biden has used the term dark winter several times. He used it several times in his campaign. Well, it just so happens that there was a uh, one of those lockstep type uh, Rockefeller studies. Um, and it was called dark winter. Hmm. So now, what did Biden mean when he said that? Probably we'll never know. And probably he doesn't even know either because he probably just, you know, yeah, remembered yeah. that they had told yeah. him dark yeah. winter and before as he was walking onto the stage. And so then he remembered, oh, yeah, I got to say dark winter. Yeah. But now the scenario of uh, event 201 which took place in October, I believe, of 2019, is exactly what unfolded in January of 2020. And we've got Klaus Schwab and all of them telling us uh, that there's going to be another cyber polygon. And the cyber polygon, which is one the name of the study, and people can go and they can they can research this stuff themselves. If I say DARPA and you don't know what DARPA is, just put it in your search engine and look it up. And then see, say DARPA, um, nanotechnology. And then look and see, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's not like it's rocket science. It's just that I read a lot and I read so much. In fact, I was talking and I told you the last time we talked, I talked to this doctor almost every day, right? And basically what we do is we compare medical notes with political notes. So he's doing the medical research. I'm doing the political research. And together we're trying to figure out what the heck the next thing is that they're going to pop on us. Mm. And um, so uh, this morning I told him by now you should be convinced that they will pull the trigger and they don't care how many people die, they will pull the trigger. So um, what I like to listen to is the members of parliament in the UK parliament, because every once in a while, and I've got friends over there who send me the good parts of the debate. If you want to know what I'm looking at, you can find me on Telegram. There's a channel somebody else set it up for me called Dr. Cynthia McKinney. Because, you know, if I had set it up myself, I wouldn't be saying Dr. Cynthia McKinney. But uh, this uh, young man set it up. And I just when I read, I just dump everything over there. So you can find what I'm talking about on that Telegram channel. And the UK parliamentarian, one uh, parliamentarian got up and talked about who was showing up in the hospitals. Right. It's not the unvaccinated. It's the vaccinated. And it's exactly the way it turned out. It was um, predicted by Dr. Geert von Bosch, Geert de von Bosch, uh, G-E-E-R-T, Dr. Geert, he predicted that exactly what 
is happening now and what happened to the ferrets, to the animals, would happen to human beings. And that is upon re-exposure. You know, we've got all these variants. Dr. Geert says that SARS coronavirus 2 mutates every 10 hours. So we've got a new mutation every 10 hours. So upon re-exposure to the uh, mutation, mutated form of SARS coronavirus 2, which probably doesn't even exist any longer in its original form, um, <clears throat> The, the animals got sick. They developed uh, organ failure and they died. Hmm. So um, now what we're, what they have termed breakthrough COVID cases, breakthrough. I don't know why they called it that because basically what has happened is they got the darn jab and um, a lot of them, a lot of even some of my friends got it so they could um, keep their job. My son took it. I'm shocked. I'm totally, I said, McKinney spirit is to fight. You don't yeah. surrender. Hmm. <laughs> you can't be a McKinney if you surrender. Well, anyway, uh, so I'm still, you know, sort of apoplectic about that. But uh, my other friends took the jab so that they could um, travel. And uh, so all of this is happening. And then if they go out and they get re-exposed, they get one of those breakthrough cases, that could be very, very serious. Very, very serious. Whereas I have the rest of us who are unvaccinated, we have our natural immune system. And as long as we take care of it, it'll take care of us. Um, and now we're finding out that a lot of people who develop cancer, well, they were vitamin D deficiency, uh, d deficient. So what, uh we're now seeing is that our immune system, if we take care of our immune system, it's not just about COVID. It's about cancer. It's, you know, it's about a lot of these other chronic diseases that, um, that we have that we really shouldn't have. So I take, um, I take my vitamin D every day. I take 10,000 international units every day. Take my vitamin D, the vitamin C, um, black seed oil, elderberry syrup, the black seed oil, according to the doctor that I talked to, the black seed oil is very, very important. And I remember when my dad got sick, uh, uh, you talking about black seed oil from India? You talking about the original black seed oil? The original black seed oil. That's you know. Right. You know what that's called? No, it's called what? Kalanji. That's the oh, seed. really? Yeah. Yes. Fun fact, folks out there, get your black seed oil, get your Kalanji. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> yes, the yeah. the the black seed oil. It was uh Dick Gregory. Yes. Who told me? He said, um, "You attack it from every way you can attack it." And um, it was it ended up being the Western medicine that killed my dad. I tried the tr traditional Chinese, the Ayurvedic. We had all of it going you know, and I, the black seed oil as well. Speaking of Dick Gregory, I just saw a picture where I was on stage with you, him, Tawana Brawley. Mm. And um, I remember that event. Yeah. And um, I think it was automatics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. Just, just actually saw that picture yesterday. It's funny that you mentioned. Wow. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So people who are listening should make sure that they are taking the Kalanji, right. the um, 
uh, elderberry syrup, the vitamin C, vitamin D3, and NAC. NAC, which um, 600 milligrams of that, 10,000 milligrams, but people of darker skin, we have to take more vitamin D. Uh, the vitamin C, uh, at least a thousand. Now, some people are taking way more than that. I'm drinking chaga tea, mm -hmm. which is the chaga from the chaga mushroom. It also is very rich in vitamin D. Another way to get it other than by taking a pill. And um, the uh, ivermectin. And um, now the quercetin and vitamin C work together with the zinc if you can't get hydroxychloroquine. <clears throat> but I just looked at a show mm, yesterday morning, uh, of course, a replay on, tele on, on Telegram, uh, Dr. Artis. And if you go to, actually his website is drartisshow.com. He has there, but he said you can get the ivermectin from India. He said the doctors are getting it from India. The doctors in the U.S. that are using ivermectin are getting it from India. Hmm. Um, I was getting it, and um, the so pharmacies are shutting down on the stuff that works. The FDA is uh, making it very difficult to get uh, some things like the NAC, for example, in, as in Nancy, AC, NAC. What it does is it promotes the production of glutathione in the body. And if the body produces glutathione, then it kills, the glutathione kills the um the spike protein, because now the virus, the virus is a cold, I chew, right? <laughs> it's just a cold, I chew. That's the virus. The spike protein is the bioweapon. Right. And it's the, bi the, the, the spike protein that these mRNA vaccines is telling your body to reproduce. So your body becomes a factory of spike protein. And then when you are around other people, those other, those other people are affected by, I have one girlfriend who took the Moderna shot and she has not stopped bleeding since. Hmm. Um, and if you look online and you see, if you just, you know, if you're in the Provax column, it's fine. Okay, you're in the pro column but be knowledgeable about what's happening out there. Uh, if you look at some of the autopsies, the re autopsy results, I do that too. And uh, you see blood clots like you've never seen before. And that's because the spike is producing blood clotting as well. So there's lots of problems with these jabs and they haven't been tested on human beings. This is the test, that much is true. And uh, so what is their ultimate gain, uh, um, uh, goal for this? I can't tell you, but they're mighty excited about getting a needle in every arm. That's what, isn't that what Gates mm -hmm. said? A needle in every arm. Okay. And okay. now they're putting it in our babies. And Kalanji, you have a baby. That's right. Yeah, we we don't uh, believe in vax at all on no level. Um, yeah. So definitely, uh, you know, and that that was before. That has nothing to do with this. Just yeah. um, right. Know, I mean, it's just something that you know we were never into, like you said, uh, going natural. And, and you know, it's it's crazy because of the fact that I'm finding like this is akin to. Uh, I remember I, when I when I first became a vegan, mm -hmm. and I remember I would uh, go to my family's home and. My uncle, he'd be like, hide the plants. Here you come. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, it's just like, it's almost like, you know, it becomes, and 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 I know that's not what you're trying to do, not what we're trying to do, but it becomes almost like a civil war 
because it's yeah. like, okay, well, if you're not this, it's like folks get mad at you because yeah. of the fact that you saying that I reject that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? My yeah. rejecting it, and 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 I know that uh, one of the comrades, uh, Jared, had interviewed uh, some doctors out of Italy, and mm -hmm. one of them was saying just how you know over there they refer to you as a terrorist mm -hmm. if you're not getting the jab. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's like ill how society has just been transformed. Now, right. my my position is what you eat don't make me use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. if, if, if Like my father said, if you like it, I love it. If that's what you into, do your thing. But don't try to force what you that's into right. onto that's others. Right. Because that's right. what we're doing here, we're not saying that, you know, if you don't, if you do it that way, then something's wrong with you. Or I mean, yeah. that's, that's that's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So when you get a member of parliament who stands up in the House of Commons and says that 60 percent of the people in the ICU are fully vaccinated. 60 percent of the people in the ICU are fully vaccinated. What does that mean? What does that mean? So now what's going on with those who took the jab that would land them in the ICU? That's I, I'm just saying, if you're in favor of it, then be knowledgeable about what the effects are. Right. Right. And, that, and that's that's the, the, the best part of it. But, um, you know, move, moving right along. I appreciate <laughs> that. You, you, you got some uh, some herbal advice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How many folks out of Congress can can go to the hood, come back, you know what I mean, get a PhD, and uh, and then give you some herbal advice on top of that? Well, um, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I could take it. some herbal advice too. <laughs> hey, not, nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that's the beauty, uh, and that's one thing I appreciate about you because of the fact that um, you know you talked about uh, the Panther Party. You know what I mean? And I've seen you. Oh. I love the Black Panthers. Of course. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I, I just, I, they, they taught us so much, not by what they talked about, Actually. but by what they did. That's right. That's right. And shout out yeah. to, to Daruba. I remember one of, one of my fond memories of, it was, uh, us having the press conference over at Mauli's office. Uh, mm -hmm. and shout out to Mauli and, uh, the reporter, tried to uh tell you and uh the ruble what the narrative was and, <laughs> they always do yeah and it, it, it was a pretty uh let's just say that went viral so uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah because the ruble broke it down to him man and man. you know the bottom line is that <clears throat> and you know half the people who are talking about critical race theory don't know what they, they've been never been in a classroom to learn it in the first place exactly um, mm -hmm. and a lot of this that is going on now is about people just not wanting to deal with the issue of race. Right. And until we deal with the issue of race, we will always be divided. And if we're always divided, then we will always be conquered because division is the means by which this country has already been conquered and lost to the pilgrims <laughs> who, who, who founded it by way of trafficking and and uh, genocide in the first place. Right. So uh, the tremendous changes that have taken, that are in the process of being taken place, actually this great reset, the fourth industrial Re uh, revolution, I've uh, bought all of Klaus Schwab's books because I want to understand. Uh, and they're moving at such a rapid pace now <laughs> that before I get to, by the time I finish this one, they'll be already, uh, be, we'll be into well into the fourth uh, revolution, the Great Reset. We already are into the Great Reset. The fact that we're having this discussion now right. uh, mediated by technology. Right. You know, right. It, that's the Great Reset. And there's going to be more of it. You're not going to be able to uh, hold a dollar bill in your hand. It, it's going to be uh, a digital wallet. They, you know, Nancy Pelosi has been trying to do that for the longest and it ain't going to be Bitcoin. Right. You know, right. so if you right. got Bitcoin, you better do something with it because it ain't going to be Bitcoin. Right. Sure. So they're coming after everything that we 
mm, know as quote unquote normal. And uh, they are truly revolutionaries. I call myself the revolutionary, but they have amassed the kind of power and organization that they are able to implement their revolution. And we can only look at them as they do it. They're the gangsters. They're gangsters. Yes, they are. Yeah, they yeah, are. The original gangsters. And speaking of gangsters, you talked about starting it off, we talked about local politics. And we know that uh, Gangster Reed is running again for office here. Well, now, you know, I think that's uh, propaganda. Uh, I read, uh, I think it was a patch that said that. Um, Kasim Reed was in the lead. Hmm. I can't imagine that any Leader knowledgeable what? thinking person would vote for Kasim Reed after the last eight years that we had of him. Um, but uh, apparently they are because there's quite a few Kasim Reed signs in my neighborhood, even <laughs> on my street, but my neighbors. And I'm wondering what the heck, you know, and that's what I'm saying. People don't have political history Right. They don't have historical knowledge. Politically and so retarded. therefore, uh, yes. things like, oh, you know, um, he promised me a job or um, he's uh, going to be uh, at my church. He came to my church. He bought an NAACP banquet ticket. Right. And uh, so I'm going to vote for him. Right. Yeah, right I mean, right. you know. Yeah, the, the, the lesser of two idiots. I um, yeah yeah I, I actually I I I came home and I cast my vote, and um, that I I cast it, but I don't know if it'll be counted, right. and I don't know how many other votes will be cast that uh, will be counted, and mine probably won't be counted if what happened last time is any right. indication. I mean, you know, those, I'm sick, of, to be honest, I'm sick and tired of black people committing crimes to empower white people. <laughs> it's just, yeah. you know, that, committing crimes to empower the Democratic Party. Now you talking about politicians or what, what, are you, what are you talking about when you say committing crimes to empower the... Well, actually, I wasn't talking about politicians this time. I was just talking about people who uh, run abs absentee uh, ballots through the machines four and five times, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know from what we heard on the on the uh, uh, tape, maybe some money got exchanged. Right. Um, but you know, so what happens is that certain people get into office without the regard to public will and then they're not answerable to the public because the public didn't put them there to start with and that's what um uh in one county there were forty thousand such uh ballots that that's one county had forty thousand ballots run through several times and you know if you do an absentee ballot you have to fold it to put it in the envelope. Well, right. is it, should it count if it's not folded? <laughs> I mean, that's real simple. Right. right. It's not folded. Right. Let me ask you, um, you've been in office, you were Congresswoman six times, you ran for president through the Green Party. Is, is there any hope in electoral <laughs> politics these days? Are you, Going to return to that particular arena, or what? what what's your thoughts on it? Or you going you you going to do like Jesse said, uh, Ventura, of course, and say, uh, you know, I, I, I've came, I saw, and I conquered. What, what's what's the what's the, what's the rundown? Well, um, you know, I've had my run in with those electronic voting machines myself twice, <laughs> yeah. and so. Uh, now, what we witnessed in 2020 was not just an algorithm um, for stealing, uh, adding more votes and then subtracting votes. Um, I don't know if you all remember, but in the 
2000 election in Florida, one voting machine had Gore tally as minus 16,000. That was the tally. Right. So now, of course, there's no such thing as a minus vote, right. which means that for that particular machine, the instruction wow. was to subtract 16,000 votes from Gore's total. Wow. So this is the kind of thing that has happened in the past. So uh, that's with or without electronic voting machines. They just make it way easier and more difficult to detect. Um, and so we've got electronic voting machine. We've got this absentee ballot phenomenon. And um, what I've said is we can't not vote because that gives it to them easily. We have to vote even if they steal it, make them work hard and make them steal it. So honestly, Kalanji, but if we don't cast an informed vote so that we're voting for the right people, I mean, like, I'll vote for you. I probably you need like to run. Votes. You think I should run? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. You know, yeah, it, I, I'm ready to pass the torch to the new generation. But, we, well, we, but um, I, I, it's only it can only be. In fact, I might be calling. <laughs> I might be calling you on that matter. But um, <laughs> it's got to be people who have a track record. And um, because they can buy people with a track record, right they can buy them. So, you know, if you don't have a track record, you already right. bought. That's right. Bought and sold. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. the reward, uh, my campaign theme in 1992 was warriors don't wear medals. They wear scars. Hmm. We've got scars. And you won. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, I won that time, but I didn't win the I didn't win the battle. I didn't win the war. I didn't, you know, because hey. because as much as I was able to get done, you know, for people environmental justice for people over there in Augusta and down in Savannah, I got whole families moved out of an area that was prone to flooding and they put them there. They didn't even have a pump for them. I mean, you know, right. and they had um, industrial runoff over in Augusta and the people were dying with cancer or cynical keratosis. You could see it in their hands. And so I uh, got them uh, health care for life. So you and, won. Um, that, that, that's the point. You know, there, there's battles and there's a war. You won battles. We lose battles and the war is still on. So, you know, the war so, is still on. Yeah. yeah but, yeah. you know, I, I feel like our generals, our generals are deficient because they're mm. sleeping with the enemy. Mm. Our generals don't belong to us. They don't wear our uniform. And that's what we've got to be able to see that uh, just because uh, somebody's skin is black doesn't mean that they wear that they're on our side and that they wear our uniform. They're right. not wearing our uniform. Right, right. So, yeah, um, definitely appreciate you. Always appreciate you coming through. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't remember a time that I called on you. I don't care if we was in the hood or whatever. You came <laughs> through. I appreciate that. Uh, no bodyguards or nothing. You felt comfortable enough to know that wherever we were at, you was going to be safe. And yeah, that, that absolutely. Was, <laughs> that was while in office. And, 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 you know, at that time, you know, I didn't give it any thought because of the fact that I'm just like, yeah, we, you know, we in these streets, we got work to do. But now seeing how the average politician, because I, I know a whole lot of politicians. Yeah. And someone asked me the other day, they said, uh, well, why don't you uh, get such and such on the, uh, on the show? I'm like, look, they're not going to come on here with me because of the fact that they are concerned about their careers. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. I'm not the guy you want to hang with if you're concerned with your career. You know what I mean? Because of the fact that we're talking about uh, when we talk about revolution, it's it's yeah. you know, no holds barred. And folks don't want to hear that because of the fact that it's not safe. But, but um, you know what? What you did, Kalanji, you've remained true to your values. You 
you took a look inside. I don't know. I should be asking you. You asking me where did I get my start? I should be asking you how how did you formulate a set of principles? Where did you get them from? And then how do you stick to them? Because you've stuck to them for as long as I've known Kalanji. I've known principled Kalanji. I appreciate that. I, I would say I got them from the ancestors. And the reason I'm able to stick to them is because I like to go home. Yes. And if I want to keep going home, I got to yes. make sure I'm on the right side of the barricades because of the fact that I represent just like you, something bigger than than yes. any of us. So that's the that's the reason. Now, it, it gets tempting. You know what I'm saying? You've had, yes. you yes. know, when you're hungry and they invite you to the, you know, <laughs> to the banquet. Oh, yeah. The biggest yeah. banquet you can find and, you know, and all the good food. I yeah. Mean, you know, the biggest the, shrimp. Man, <laughs> man, it's spread out. Everything's good. <laughs> You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, but, you know, we're grateful. I appreciate your work, your efforts, your energy. And we, you know, we didn't get to say where you came from, but your father alone, being able to meet him and be in his presence. Uh, folks that don't know, uh, yeah. brother James McKinney, he was yeah. a bad dude. I'm talking about. Yeah, but you look up Billy. Because Billy if you say that's James, right. you'll find I, I, something. I said James. I'm <laughs> but that's that his from? real name. That's his right. real name. Hey, it's James. See, but... I've been studying. I read too much. <laughs> Brother Billy McKinney. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and I remember, like I said, I remember him shutting shutting down uh, this sellout preacher out here. And I'm going to call him by his name. Um, and I can't think Eddie of Long. Eddie Long. Yeah, Eddie Long, him too. But the other one, the, the, the inspiring oh. one that was working uh, with Captain Johnson's family. Who now oh, is back in the police? Uh, yes, little shady uh, Grady. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name, man. He's he's a, a real piece of doo doo. But he, I remember he, he would be insulted that we've forgotten him. But I know, I we, know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but look at the ancestors. They like, man, don't you call that food name? But I remember <laughs> we were we was doing this uh, uh, this demo. I think it was the one year anniversary of um, Captain Johnson being assassinated, mm -hmm. and we had a whole thing planned. And we get there. And yeah. he beat us to the house and he had yeah. all kinds of equipment set up on the joint. Yeah. And he wasn't dead, but I remember uh one of his assistants was setting it up and you you walked up to him, you said, uh, you said, Come on, Joe, you got all this equipment out here. I said, Nah, that ain't us, that's somebody else. So no, we about to use this. You walk yeah. right up to the steps, <laughs> uh, a one, two, one, two test. <laughs> that's man, right. The man, like, excuse me, he's like, Oh, hey, Congresswoman McKinney. <laughs> and and uh then homeboy rolls up. And he sees your father and he's like, oh hey mr mckinney yeah and i was like nope mr mckinney me you son of a bitch he just, he just, <laughs> oh, yeah my dad that, that was billy <laughs> he, 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 he went off on him man and, and yeah i think we were being interviewed by the press and you had to step away to kind of calm him down <laughs> but, but, yeah but, you know um because our community is being taken advantage of the right. ignorance in our community. That's right. People who are smart in other ways in grifting are able to take advantage of our community. And I know our people don't want to die. Our people want to live. Our people want to live quality lives and they are unfortunately easily confused as to who is going to produce that. And um, when, uh, I mean, if you go through and look at Baltimore, that's a testimony of failure of black political um, uh, uh, thievery it, and hijacking. And yeah, it's failure. If you yeah. look at the city of Atlanta, people, I mean, we have poverty in the city of Atlanta, a right. lot of it. We used to have, it used to be more than 40%. I think it's probably down at 30, I think. I haven't checked the numbers, to be honest, lately. Right. But uh, Simpson Road still looks like it, it still looks like it did. Yeah. And, and you know, they didn't get yeah, they yet. haven't gentrified it yet. Yeah. Right. And, you right. know, so, um, we we have to demand better. We have to demand more. We and and uh, so now anyway, I'm just into another thing. 
you know, I have my beliefs, I have my ideas and I try to live according to my values, just like you. Um, but at the end of the day, if people aren't ready to sacrifice and fight, I can't fight for them anymore. I've done everything I could do and it wasn't enough. Well, listen, uh, you've done what you supposed to do and, <laughs> and, and, and you're still on active duty. So don't, I don't know what you sound like. Are you ready to leave the battlefield? You know <laughs> yeah, it's and, time to retire. Yeah. I need to have some fun now. <laughs> yeah, no, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. De definitely, I can feel you on that. You know, it's, it's the world is a beautiful thing, beautiful place, and That's we shouldn't right. let them rob us of our our peace and our joy. And but so now time. you see, it's your turn. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> I'm hey. gonna be calling you. I'll be calling I, I, I'm you. 50 we got a little now. project. I, 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 <laughs> at a perfect time. Perfect, perfect age. Time. Okay. <laughs> perfect age. Huh? That's right. <laughs> Just when I thought it was safe. Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Call me and I'm okay. on duty. Okay. Um, definitely. We appreciate you stopping through today. Anytime uh, you need to get the word out, any message whatsoever, make sure you stop through Black Power Media, uh, Riot Starter TV in particular, because you know what we do around here. Yes. And, uh, you know, we love you and keep up the good work. Okay. Thank you. I'll come back when I finish reading my book. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Be safe. Okay. You know, we live Riot Starter TV that was U.S. Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney. Um, we hope you all enjoyed that particular interview. Uh, we have a lot more coming up, but we need your support. We need you all to make sure that you become a Patreon. Go to blackpowermedia.org, blackpowermedia.org, and um, you know become a Patreon, a patron to support our platform. As I mentioned a few days ago, we've had... Uh, pretty much every political organization we could think of from the 60s, from uh, the BLA to the Black Panther Party to the Young Lords, the Weather Underground, uh, the RNA. We have folks from SNCC. We have folks from uh, uh, the Revolutionary Action Movement, MOVE, so on and so forth. You know, So continue to uh, support our works, our efforts, and our energies. A uh, whole lot more stuff coming up throughout the weekend. Stay on point. Stay ready for revolution, and um, we out of here. Riot Starter TV, next. <laughs>